The truth is, I never wanted to be an editor. I get a lot of emails and comments of people asking me, how did I start editing for Markiplier? How does one start working with other YouTubers? How did this happen? And I thought the answer was obvious. But then I realized that my journey with Mark started almost nine years ago. And a lot of people who know me as Lixian the editor might not have the full context of how me and Mark started working together. There were three crucial steps in my life that led me to work as a Markiplier's editor. This is a story of how I started working with Mark, but it's also a story about my own channels because it's all connected. So let's start at the beginning. But before we start, this video is not sponsored by anyone, but the links and blushes are still available. But only for a limited time. This is not a joke. Much like Unas Anas, once that timer ends, they are gone forever. So click the link in the description to get your own adorable links and blushy. The year was 2013. I had just been fired from my job because the contract ended, not because I'm a bad employee, Maybe. I had very little money, I was still living with my parents, and I had exactly zero clue of what to do with my life. One thing I liked doing was playing video games, and also watching other humans play video games on YouTube, especially horror games. It was at this point that I realized that some people on YouTube were making a living from Let's Play videos, which I found fascinating. So I made the only logical decision. I decided that I wanted to make my own YouTube channel, but I wasn't quite sure what kind of videos I wanted to do. I didn't want to do Let's Play videos, mostly because I never thought anyone would want to watch me play video games. Now, the one thing I could do was animation. Kinda, sort of. I had tried animation before, so I wasn't completely new to it. So it was decided I was going to have an animation channel. Now, the problem was what to animate. Animating Game Grumps videos was something really popular at the time, which people still do to this day. I thought it was a good idea for a first video. So on February 15th, 2013, I uploaded my first animation on this channel. The Game Grumps animated Shut Up Monita video. I pushed start, I pushed A, I play the f game! And it actually did pretty good. I remember in the first week after uploading that video, I got like 100 subscribers. Which might not seem like a lot, but if you ever started a channel from scratch, you know how difficult that is. So I was stoked. I wanted to do more. But I decided I wanted to animate something different. Something... So I started looking into other YouTubers that I followed. And there was this one small channel called Markiplier Game. I say small now, but even at the time, you already had like 300,000 subscribers, which is still a lot, do not get me wrong. But you know, comparing to today's numbers, it's, his channel was pretty much in his infancy. I loved his videos. I had been following his content for a while, and most of his videos were horror game let's plays. How convenient. He was also really funny. Good. Shut up, we all got problems. And let's not forget the voice. Oh, that's familiar. His voice was something that, coupled with his comedy, I think would fit an animation really well. Now, at the time, I did a quick search and there were no Markiplier animations on YouTube. So I was definitely in uncharted territory, which was a little scary. I didn't know if he would be flattered or upset about it, or even if he would watch it. But I decided to do it anyways, mostly because I liked his content and not so much for the sake of getting views and subscribers. Turns out, it was the best decision I've ever made. Because one month and a half later, the video Markiplier Animated Psychosis was uploaded on my channel and it was an absolute success. To this day, the most viewed video on my channel. The day that video got uploaded, Mark shared with all of his socials. And I was so happy. I have no idea how he found the video, but I am glad he did. So, after the success of that video, I made the only logical decision. I made another one. And 16 days later, I uploaded Markiplier Animated Wilford Wurfstash, which was also another smashing hit. Still, my second most viewed video. Five days later, I get an email from none other than Mr. Fishbuck himself, saying that he loved the animations and the fans seemed to love them as well, and asking if I was willing to make animations for his channel, and that he would actually pay me. I was ecstatic. I get to work with this great YouTuber 
and I get money? Hell yeah! And this is how I became Markiplier's animator. Which is not the same as the title of this video, but it was the first step in establishing this professional relationship. This was crucial step number one that led me to be Markiplier's editor. Making animations to the point where I became his animator. Now the plan was to animate for him and in my spare time animate for my own channel. If you ever animated before, you know where this is going, because animators don't have free time. So it was a juggling contest. I would do an animation for him and then an animation for me. One for him, one for me. Over the years, I tried a lot of different types of videos on my channel. I animated parodies, other YouTubers, made some music. I animated videos from my own gaming channel. What are you doing? It's called Revenge. We'll get to my gaming channel in a second, because that's important. I tried 3D animation. I made videos commenting on what I liked and disliked on certain video games. And I will recently devlog style videos of the games that I made. So I didn't know what I wanted to do on YouTube in 2013, and I clearly don't know what to do now. The only constant in almost all the videos was the animation portion. All of this while doing animations for Markiplier. Except maybe before the devlogs, because that was something that came later. As for the Markiplier animations, I did a bunch of them. Excluding the first two animations that are on my channel, I made 34 exclusive animations for his channel. The great thing about animating for Markiplier was I could animate whatever and whenever I wanted. With the exception of one, every single animation I made for him, I made it because I want it. I would just normally watch his videos and then if something interesting happened, I would yoink the audio out of that video and animate it on top of it. The only time he was like, hey Lixen, could you please animate this? Was for the first Five Nights at Freddy's game. Which was actually a great call because that is still to this day my most popular animation on his channel. The thing is, this wasn't like a job to me. Like, don't get me wrong, it was work. It was a lot of work. But I animated when I wanted to animate. This wasn't so much a job, it was freelance work. Then I did whatever I wanted. I got paid per video, which means I could go like two or three months without animating anything for Mark and instead just focus on my channel. But the important takeaway here is that I kept animating. And this was crucial step number two. Because the more I animated for him, the better I got at grasping his type of comedy. And the better I got at understanding comedic timing in general, and even horror timing. Most importantly, it solidified my professional relationship with Mark, and that he could count on me to keep content coming. Again, he didn't ask me for anything. I just delivered the work. This is a big deal because trust is the hardest thing to build and in a professional setting this is really important because, generally speaking, the more someone trusts you, the more opportunities you get because they know they can count on you. Now, going back to mid-2013 was when I moved out of my parents' home to go live with my girlfriend and back in May I had created a channel called Lixian VG, which was supposed to be a gaming channel. At this point I was getting a decent amount of views and amount of subscribers and I felt a little bit more confident that maybe some people would enjoy watching me play video games. But only by the end of the year was when I actually had the courage to start uploading videos on that channel. On November 13th 2013 I uploaded the first video on my gaming channel. And this is important because from 2013 all the way until 2017 I edited more than 500 videos on that channel. Little did I know this was practice, but what was going to happen later. So I tried juggling two channels and animating for Mark all at the same time. At the beginning I wasn't super consistent on my gaming channel, but at one point I decided to take it a little bit more seriously, and I started uploading three videos a week. I uploaded single player videos and multiplayer videos, but it wasn't until around 2015 that I started finding my own personal editing style. I started recording GTA 5 online with some friends like Bob, Tom, Ray and Vox, and it became one of the most popular series on that channel. For those videos I started using more complicated edits, so I used a lot of sound effects and a lot of cuts. Wow, thanks. Trying my best to make those videos super fun to watch. And each video took so long to edit. So I made the only logical decision. I decided to start using that editing style in 
every video I made. So I had one mildly successful channel, another channel that was starting to get some traction, and I was animating for what had become one of the biggest gaming channels on the platform. Things were looking up for good old licks. And then in early 2017, I started feeling strange. With that feeling also came an impulse to finally learn game development. Now, I've always been fascinated with video games. I even made a series called Just My Opinion, where I would talk about different aspects of games that I liked. The problem was making video games seemed very complicated, and I always thought I wasn't smart enough to make them, so I never really tried. But I was seeing games like Undertale, Hotline Miami, and a plethora of other games being made by one or two people, and I was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna try and learn it. If I grasp it, good. If I don't, well, at least I tried. And so began my adventure of trying to learn video game development, more specifically Game Maker Studio. And you know what? I liked it. I loved it, even. Making games was so satisfying. Complicated. But once a project was completed, even if it was just a small prototype from a tutorial, it was very satisfying. And so I started working on my first and so far the only commercial game, Shield Blast. Okay, so let's count all of these. I was doing animations for Mark, animations for my channel, posting three videos a week where one video can take an entire day to edit, plus working on the game. And then that strange feeling became really clear. I don't think I ever experienced that before, but it was clear as day. I was exhausted. And I mean, I'm a human, I think. I am. I'm, I'm a human. Definitely human. I could not keep this up. So, I made the only logical decision, and I closed the gaming channel. And by close, I don't mean I unisonuses it. Unisonuses it. I mean, everything is there, I just don't upload anymore. The more recent videos are just highlights from my streams on this channel. You can tell I had a lot more free time after that, because that's when I started uploading a lot of just my opinion videos. And then there's a big gap from one video to another, because I decided I wanted to give this game dev thing a real shot. And so I took a one year game development course. I finished my top 10 scariest moments in gaming video, and then I only focused on the course. And I think I made a couple more Markiplier animations until the end of the year. I only had classes three times a week, three hours each class, so it wasn't a super time demanding course when it comes to like going to the actual school and being there. I needed more time at home to practice game development, but I still wanted to have time to do animations for Mark because rent and food. However, late December was when I sent Mark what would be the last animation I've done for him since. Because when I sent him this animation, he asked if I would be interested in editing some videos for him next year. Now, by December, I had not edited gaming videos in a while, but I knew how to do it, and the way he phrased it sounded like it was more of a temporary thing, like just to help him out for a while. So I said, yeah, I would love to. Now, the thing is, why? Why did this happen? Of all people, why me? Why? the animator. In January we had a call and turns out he had seen some of my editing work on my gaming channel. So it turns out that all of the work that I had put in all of those 500 plus videos actually paid off. And this is why my gaming channel was crucial step number three. Had I never started that channel, had I never put so much work into those videos, I would not be where I am today. Now, that doesn't mean I was 100% ready to start working for Mark. Firstly, I had to change my editing software. I used to edit with Sony Vegas, and now I would be using Premiere Pro, so that took a little bit getting used to. Secondly, I was editing for someone else, which is kind of weird. I had never done that before, so my anxiety was always like, no, 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 this is not good enough, not good enough. Mark's channel is huge, so to my eyes, the standards were really high. So I always tried my best with every single video that I edited. This uncertainty, this not knowing if the video was good enough, went on for like 
two years. It took me two years to get confident in my editing abilities. That doesn't mean I don't have doubts every once in a while, that still happens to this day. But for the most part, I'm pretty confident in what I'm doing. Now, because of the game dev course, I was only working as a part-time editor. That way I could split my focus between game dev and editing, and it was actually perfect. I always had time to work on both, and I even made a pretty decent prototype by the end of the course called Blight Seekers. Working title. And not to brag, because I don't brag, never, but it was the best prototype of the entire class, most favorite from all the teachers. No big deal, I was just, I was the best. Now that game never saw the light of day and probably never will. I might upload that prototype on itch someday if you guys want. Now when I started working for Mark, no one knew it was me. If you check the first video I edited for him, Gauntlet of Ire, which if you compare that video to my most recent videos, it was alright I guess. I clearly had a lot to learn, especially in premiere but if you look in the description my name isn't there <gasps> the thing is i was supposed to help him out for a while i don't think even he knew i would stay his editor for so long so we kept it I don't want to say secret, but for the lack of a better English vocabulary, I'm going to say secret. And trust me, I was completely fine with not having my name in the description. New editors, especially on popular channels, tend to be slaughtered, at least until they prove themselves. So I actually preferred it this way. Not that I think you guys would slaughter me, right? When I finished the course, I actually took some time off. I was still editing for Mark, but in part-time, and the goal was to finish Blightseekers. Working title. And one day, out of nowhere, Mark contacted me and said, Hey, you've been doing a really good job, and I really like how you've been editing the video so far. How's the course going, by the way? And I was like, oh, I'm actually done with the course. Would you maybe want to go full time? Mm, I don't know, man. I'll give you a raise. Yes. And at this point, I had edited a fair amount of videos for his channel. And Mark decided it was time for the people to know. On a wired video. It's not even on his channel. It's just random wire interview. <laughs> And that's when I, to the eyes of everyone, became Markiplier's editor. And I also started getting my name in the description. Honestly, I can't remember if I had been in any of Mark's videos at this point. Like, sometimes editors will leave messages on the videos for whatever reason, and it's usually just text. So I was like, I have my animated character, what if he popped in and talked instead of just text? And so I did that a couple of times. You guys seem to have liked it. Mark seemed to have liked it as well. And then one day he just started calling me out in videos. You want to see more scary games? They are, as always, linked in the description. Lixium, show Lixium. And the rest is history. Lixium, high five. We're in a concerted effort and a team. Bow! <laughs> Yeah! Now, from the beginning of this story, you may realize that none of this was planned. The truth is, I never wanted to be an editor. I like editing, and I especially like editing for Mark. He is incredible at improvising, so the videos would be funny even if they were unedited. I just do a little enhancement, so it's quite a satisfying process to work with someone that is this funny. But it's not like this was plotted for me to become his editor. The opportunity just showed up, quite literally out of nowhere. And when I started editing for him, all I did was my best to make his videos enjoyable to watch. Always trying to raise my editing standards, from gameplay videos to live action videos. And all of this work has thankfully been paying off. And to be honest, I wouldn't trade this for anything. And I like how things are now. I would much rather edit videos than do animations, to be completely honest. So him hiring me to be his editor was pretty much perfect timing. So thank you, Mark, for giving me all of these opportunities over the years, for trusting me and letting me be a part of so many different projects. From editing short horror gameplay videos to editing what, in my opinion, are the best three scary games on all of YouTube. Not because of me, I would never brag. I legitimately mean from Mark's gameplay and commentary alone. Am I stupid? From Markiplier makes... <laughs> Jesus Christ. You gotta knock it out before you perform. 
<laughs> to editing Una's Anna's videos. I can't say thank you enough. I really appreciate you and everything you've done for me. And after all these years, my channel finally reached the 1 million subscriber milestone. I, I can't thank you guys enough for that. Thank you. You also destroyed the follow button on Spotify. <laughs> so much so that we already have one of the goals. And no, I'm not bumping it this time. I'm taking my win. One down, seven to go. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care.